Florida has made an insane rebuild after dropping every single member of their previous roster. They decided to go for younger, a diamond in the rough type players rather than banking a veteran talent. Will this pay off, or will they have an even worse season than before? I'll break that down today. As for who they've picked up, on DPS they have checkmate as their sole holdover from last year, they picked up Hydran, the highly anticipated rookie from Red Bird Esports, and picked up Mira from the Los Angeles Gladiators. On Tank, they signed off Tank Adam from Uprising Academy, as well as someone from Team CC. On support, they have Animo from the Soul Dynasty on main support and Simajed from Falcon Esports as their flex. For coaches, they have pick up Gunba back up from Valorant, as well as previous pro McGravy. The breakdown starts now. Checkmate, Hydran, and Miller is actually a very decent DPS line. I don't think it's anything crazy, but these are some good pieces. Hydran is honestly insane up there with Ultraviolet for the best new talent out of contenders. He is a Hitchcan player with a deadly tracer, and the man is honestly insane, probably the best DPS out of North American contenders. Honestly, I would say he is around the same level as BQB, Hydran is cracked, and having the insane tracer in his back pocket makes him much more valuable. He is probably going to be the best player on the team. Checkmate is an interesting choice but he makes sense, he is still young and has a valuable hero pool for his likely to be a low price tag. He is a flex DPS that plays Tracer, so a very similar hero pool to Yaki. He is mostly known for his main tank play, but he is a decent player and won't hold back the team, at least not too much. Plus, I've said this about the Dragons as well that having two players, both projectile and hitskin that can play tracer is extremely valuable, as you can transition between any kind of tracer and other meters seamlessly. As for Mira, he gets a lot of hate, but I don't think he was terrible for the glads last year, just outshone by Kivster and Bidring, who to be fair were absolutely incredible last year. He is very good at his niche heroes of Duam first and Farah, but honestly not incredible at much else. I think he is a decent addition, though. I rate this DPS line of 6 out of 10. While Hydran is a great piece to pick up, I don't think Checkmate measures up to the rest of the league on Projectile and especially not on Tracer. And Mira is too niche to expect much playtime from him. I wouldn't expect these guys to even be a top 15 DPS line in the league, which is nuts considering Hydran's skill speaks to the level the league is at now. As for the tanks, someone is honestly pretty hype for me. I know there are going to be a lot of who jokes in the comments but he is a legitimately good player with great mechanics eager to prove himself after being second fiddle to Kellen in terms of Korean main tanks this year. A more diamond in the rough. Then especially Adam, back for a second chance after what the Valiant put him through. For those unfamiliar, Adam was signed to the Valiant after the 2020 season to be played this year. But then he was promptly dropped along with the rest of the roster due to the horrible organization of the Valiant. He honestly got it the worst of anyone, they signed him for two months. But, now he's back and more ready than ever to prove himself. I think this tank line has a lot of promise. Someone was consistently the second or third best main tank in Korean contenders, with a lot of potential for someone so young. Meanwhile, Atom is a great off tank to pair with him, he has a history of consistent success in contenders, and with a drive to improve I think he has a lot to show us. I'll give this tanklin a 7 out of 10, I don't have faith in either to build a top tier tanklin but they are decent for what they are. For the supports, Sima Jade I'm really interested in watching. He was one of the best players in EU contenders, up there with players like Carton, though he's never found any real success in contenders. Despite this, they seem to be rebuilding the backline around him, 
saying they wanted to pair him with a veteran talent in Animo. The manager of the Mayhem seems to have a ton of faith in him, and I want to see if he can live up to it. I could see him being a car, and type of player. I can't really imagine him being too top tier though, there is just too much flex support talent at the moment. Meanwhile, you have Animo, which is a somewhat disappointing signing. I think he is far from the ideal main support on the market right now with even budget options like Luke Mano being better. He hasn't shown a great performance since around Season 3, and his Bridget is pretty abysmal. Hopefully he can punch up again and show why he was considered an elite support on New York, but it's not looking so great. I'll give this support line a 4 out of 10. While Simajed seems promising, he doesn't seem like anything top tier, and Animo is frankly pretty washed. As for the coaching, I actually think Gunba is a perfect fit for the team. While he was in Valorant for a year, he coached the LA Valiant in 2020 which has similar vibes as here. A team not rated highly by many yet has the potential to punch up and beat opponents rated significantly higher than them. He has brought consistently good results except for the uprising in 2019, but we don't talk about that, and definitely brings something new to the table. As for McGravy, I honestly don't hate the signing that much, it seems like a generic player coaching signing except McGravy is known for his likability and charisma. So I think he'll make the transition nicely. He is still unproven as a coach, though so I can't rate him too highly. I'll give the coaching staff a 5 out of 10. Gunba is a coach I'm excited to see coach these guys, but he did take a year off which could hurt him, and McGravy is unproven at all. Overall, I'd say a 5 out of 10 roster. They have some good pieces like Hydran, but otherwise I feel like their players are simply outclasses on almost everything, even by some mid-tier players if we compare peaks. They have the potential to punch up and I don't think they'll be outright bad, just probably in the lower third or quarter of na. Thanks for watching, and remember to like and subscribe for more. I upload almost daily Overwatch League content, and am trying to his 100 subscribers by season 5 so any subscription helps greatly. Thanks.